What's up everyone, this is Brad, and today we're going to have a look at how we can make amazing looking diagrams using Python. Being able to codify diagrams is a huge asset and could potentially save you and your team hundreds of hours. To get started, all you need to do is run a pip install diagrams. After that, you need to install a third party software called Graphviz. Head on over to their website, the link is in the description below. Once you have those two pre-requirements installed, it's time to hop into the code. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's have a look at our first example here. You can see from diagrams, we import the diagram object. And then below that, we're importing some stencil objects. We call these nodes. These ones are all from AWS, but there's tons of different stencils out there. And I'll show them off in the other examples that we go through. So after our import, we're opening a diagram object and then sending a couple of parameters there. So the first parameter is the diagram name. We're calling this one grouped workers. The next option is to show the diagram. I have this set to true so when I run the script it's just going to open up the diagram right away. You can set this to true or false whatever your preference is. And then we're setting a direction. TB stands for towards bottom so this diagram is going to flow from the top down towards the bottom. Within the diagram, we contain our node objects. We have three separate node objects here. We have the elastic load balancer object and then we have five worker objects and then uh, RDS node object. So this is actually going to make a lot more sense if I just run the script and show what the diagram looks like and then we'll go over the nuances of setting up the node objects. So let's open our terminal and just call the script and just like that it pops up a diagram so you can see our first load balancer object is right here. There's the five worker nodes and then the events object. So let's go back into the script now. All right, so now that you've seen what the diagram looks like, the code should make a lot more sense. So we have these node objects, and these node objects are separated by the shift operators, which are the arrows in our diagram. Nodes connect to each other one after the other in a serial fashion, and if you want to connect a single node to multiple nodes, then you need to use a list. Let's go ahead and have a look at the next example. So I'm in example2.py, so let's go ahead and run it and then we'll have a look at the code. So you can see this one is a little bit different, but still sort of the same. Objects are connecting to each other in a serial fashion, one after the other. But we have some additional things going on here. The first thing to note is we're grouping services in what we call a cluster. So these three web services are in a cluster and they have like this nice little highlighted background. And these ones are also in their own cluster. So let's go ahead and have a look at the code that generated this diagram. Okay, so looking at this code, you can see that we have two cluster group objects and then we have three standalone node objects. So these are very similar to the way we did in the last script. Uh, the new one is in this cluster and basically we're just opening up this cluster object and then setting up service groups within that cluster object. At the bottom here, we simplified the code. So we're taking these objects that we pulled the nodes into and then just connecting them at the bottom. So we can see our DNS connects to our load balancer, which connects to our service group. And then that service group connects to DB master as well as memcache. So example number two, I like a lot more than example number one. It's a much easier way to organize your objects and sort of build the connections together. Let's have a look at example three, which expands on the actual connections that we make between our nodes. And it's gonna show you how you can add names to the edge objects. So I'll pull up example number three and I'm gonna run it right here. And you can see that the diagram is quite a bit more complex. You can see we got three cluster groups and now we got colored arrows and arrows with actual names on it. All right, so example number three, the imports are basically the same. We're just importing the templates and then we're importing cluster diagram. And then additionally, we're importing the edge object. So the edge object, as I mentioned before, is the actual arrow connections between your nodes. So now that we're importing that, we can actually set some attributes to those arrows. So having a look at this, you can see we got our three clusters as we saw in the diagram. And then at the bottom, we're sort of just connecting everything together. The one thing that is different with example number three is now when you're doing these shift operators, we're putting an edge object in between it. And we're basically able to modify 
how that arrow connection looks between the nodes. So this one is just adding the label parse. This one's naming it stream. You can see that this one has the color of black with the style of bold. So you can see there's a lot of different options for the edge objects. I have a graphic up top that shows you all the different options. And you can check the documentation in the description down below as well. Anyways, that's all I have for this module. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and smash that like button for me. And if you're interested in learning more about DevOps, Python, or just IT operations in general, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video.